You can't see it, and you can't smell it, but there's one thing you certainly can do. You can feel it. Wind and air, one of the most important factors in Formula One. Aerodynamics is now uh, the most important item on the car. Aerodynamics is the, the, the single uh, biggest item that we can change. The magic word is downforce. The car needs to stick to the ground. Downforce is, is simply uh, the, the force acting down on the ground. On this particular car, this is just a model of, of, of uh, uh, an F1 car, 50% model. We have a force which acts down on the ground to keep the car fixed to the ground, glued to the ground as it's going around corners. They have a real nose for it. The air first strikes the nose of the cars. Behind that, the flow has to be channeled ideally for all the subsequent parts. The wheels are particularly tricky. It also is a mechanism for directing the air away from the tyres. The tyres are one of the main drag items on the car. From a legality perspective, we can't put covers over the tyres. We have to have a way of getting the air around the tyre and over the tyre. The rear wing, just like the front, generates downforce. So the front wing generates the front downforce, the rear wing generates the rear. There are about 20 different possible settings for the rear wing. You'll see various hole positions on the rear wing. Uh, what we can do in the full scale component is change these elements I I into different angles which generate less or more downforce as required. The art is to create the perfect balance between the front and the rear. The design of the underbody has an important influence. The diffuser, which is positioned at the rear of the car, plays a crucial role. Basically, we want to have as quick air underneath the car as possible. Um, but to, to try and get it back up uh, in an efficient manner, you need to slow the air down, which is the reason we have this big ramp. If you look uh, sort of in this region, you can see this sort of angle, this ramp. So the air is effectively, the sucked air from underneath the floor is coming out here and then back into the free stream. About 40% of the downforce is generated by the air accelerator on the underbody. In terms of actual time taken to develop this whole car, we're looking at about sort of eight to 9,000 hours in the wind tunnel, uh, of, of pure wind tunnel time, in addition to a, a similar amount of time in CFD. CFD is our computational fluid dynamics, which is the numerical wind tunnel. It's using computer programs to solve the airflow over the car. This virtual work is followed by real tests. Basically what you saw before was the model um, and what we're seeing now is actually the working section of the wind tunnel. New parts can be tested within 24 hours and then used on the car itself shortly afterwards. Here time is everything once again. The field of aerodynamics moves just as rapidly as Formula One itself. It's really in the last, say, 10 years that F1 aerodynamics has progressed beyond all recognition. The technology is very, very impressive indeed. The aerodynamic engineers and the team are therefore always searching for the tiniest air current that could make their Formula One car a couple of thousandths of a second faster, so that they can leave the others behind in their slipstream.